in the conservation lab, we usually have objects that have some kind of problem or they're on their way. They're on their way back from an exhibition or a loan or they're on their way out or they were in, in storage or something's happened. This particular basket is from an archaeological site. It's been in the lab quite a while because it takes a couple of us, more than two, usually three people, to work on it at the same time because it's so enormous. It is the biggest one in the collection. We're really lucky because we have had an image from about the time that it was um, brought to the museum. And it told us a little bit about the condition. We also then had a picture of when we started with it. And this is shortly after it had been given a preliminary cleaning. It's actually upside down here. And that helped us by having the earlier picture determine which direction. It also helped us know we were going to look for a lid. And it gave us an idea of the shape. So you can see these two pictures what we were starting with really didn't look anything like how it came to the museum. What we've been doing in the meantime is taking this missing bottom and creating a new one and then utilizing everything from soft brushes, painter brushes, and to clean off the surface and then going with this material, this Tyvek, sort of like the shipping envelopes, but this is a different grade and giving it a tone, a preliminary toning, so it doesn't scream, we um, have been inserting missing stitch areas to try to begin hold it together. So once we got a section in the base and then stabilized the top, we're able to start dealing with the midsection. So what you're seeing down here are preliminary ties that we were just trying to hold it together, the white ones. And the ones that are toned, initially toned, are set in in the correct location where they're needed. And this material, how it works, and, and Gina's holding um, a strip, and then we sort of create creases in this. And then using the very long uh, upholstery needles, we're able to feed it through one sets it through and the other reaches for it, we're able to recreate a facsimile of the weaving uh, stitch that'll help it hold together. So now we're in the process at this point of getting it back and we'll start working on this lower section that was all blown out here. Well, we're gonna have to put it on its side to do that. So we're gonna wait till we have three or four people to do that. A big decision for us was do we make it perfect in shape like it was when it was made or do we respond to the damage over time? So we're making a compromise. We'd like this to remain flat up on top so that the lid will fit properly, but we're probably going to allow the story of time and distortion be told. We're also going to leave this opening here, which is held open temporarily by foam, because we believe that's where a rodent in antiquity went in to get some food. So we'll stabilize that opening, but we won't reweave it. So that's what we're thinking of now. Of course, with the process of conservation, we get started, we adjust, we move ahead, Sometimes we step back, we undo, and we go again. So our process on a piece this large, this complicated, is slow. This takes a couple years to get finished. And along the way, we are actually figuring out where to go, trying new materials, as well as going continually back to these old photos to get an idea of where were we and where are we? What, what's the right thing to do? Like all our conservation treatments, this one's completely reversible. If somebody has a better idea, a better material they'd like to try in the future, all of this can come out and be redone again. <laughs>